By popular demand, I'm going to be reviewing my iMac Pro. I've been using it for about eight months now, so I have a pretty good feel for it. A little warning before I start, this video contains sticker shock. No, that's not what happens when you touch a sticker and get electrocuted. That is called stickercution. Sticker shock is an old school term from back in the day when people would schlep out to physical stores to buy things. Prices were applied with stickers and when you saw the price, you'd go into shock if it was too high. I know, stupid, right? You paid too much for sugar hoof. I did not, now rip that sticker off. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. My Mac Pro didn't come with any stickers. Here's what it did come with. A 3.2 gigahertz, eight core Intel Xeon W processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte SSD storage drive, the Radon Pro Vega 56 with eight gigabytes of memory, 27 inch Retina 5K display, and some Apple stickers. You filthy lion piece of cheese. A lot of times when I review stuff around here, I say, hey, don't get the base configuration because that's just the manufacturer trying to lower the price. It's not the best thing you can get just not powerful enough but honestly here i could say that is not the case 32 gigabytes of ram that's a lot of ram and you can get up to 256 gigabytes of ram if you literally want to double the price of this thing i personally don't i do understand why it's so expensive they have to crack open 86 ipad airs and take the ram out of those in order to get 256 gigs of ram to put into this thing and when you do the math that's 43,000 dollars worth of iPads they need to destroy just for you to get the top of the line configuration. When you think about it, it's a steal. Brad knows computers. The one thing I would have liked to have upgraded but I didn't was the hard drive. For now, I'm cool rocking the external four gigabyte drive I picked up for only a hundred bucks. It's not an SSD drive, it's not as fast, but the upgrade internally is not worth the, uh, let me uh, let me check my notes here. $2,400? Jeez, I gave the sticker shock warning and I still wasn't ready. Now, obviously this is an all-in-one, the computer and the screen together and the screen itself is gorgeous. We're talking full 5K resolution, 27 inch monitor, it is huge. It is a glossy display, so the colors really pop out. I did have to do some rearranging in my office to accommodate this. Before I was using a matte Huion display it's a drawing tablet that I was also using as my monitor so the Sun didn't really bother me so much now this is the one wall in my office I can put it against where I'm not getting a lot of glare if your space is full of natural light especially coming from behind you you're gonna get a lot of reflection but that's really the case with any glossy display which I guess most monitors are nowadays when we take a look around the back we've got all our ports we got four standard USB ports and four of the newer USB C ports now technically those four USB C ports are our full-blown Thunderbolt 3 ports. I love that you're getting selection here. Apple isn't ramming the newer USB-C ports down your throat like they are on their laptop lines. Even the newer tech that I'm getting into review, like most of the drawing tablets or that external hard drive I talked about earlier, they're still using those old USB standard ports. The one thing I do need an adapter for quite often is there are no display ports on here. Well, technically the Thunderbolt ports are display ports, but it doesn't have an HDMI port. Any of the drawing tablets that I'm using on a regular basis are going to require an HDMI, so I have my little Thunderbolt to HDMI adapter. We also have an SD card slot along the back, perfect for me unloading all my video files from my camera. When I was configuring this online, the one regret that I had is I didn't opt for the $50 upgrade from the Magic Mouse to the Magic Trackpad. By default, it comes with the little black Magic Mouse, and the Magic Mouse is pretty. It looks really fantastic on my desk. It looks really good against the Space Gray keyboard along with the Space Gray iMac. But for me, I love my little Logitech M705 wireless mouse. I don't want to give that little guy up. I have used these mice for ages. This is my fourth M705, and at this point, it's like an extension of my hand when I'm working. I'm sure the Magic Mouse is great, but every other every other mouse I have ever used feels like I am navigating with a tree sloth. Or a jackrabbit, depending on where I put the mouse sensitivity. I'm not dissing the Magic Mouse. I'm sure it's really nice. A lot of people love it. It's just not for me. The Magic Trackpad, however, is really nice. I know this because I have a white one. I picked it up a while back. I don't use it for everything, but navigating between spaces on the Mac or easily pinching and zooming in and out of uh, illustrations or designs are really handy. And it's one of the things I really love about using Mac OS. So this is the part of the video where I put together a random list of unassorted things that I like about this computer. Like the fan noise, it is non-existent. The only reason that I know it is blowing is because my cat loves to stand behind my computer when it gets warm. Point two. 
two. This thing is blazing fast. I literally never think about waiting. I can't remember the last time I saw the Apple Beach Ball loading anything. It must have at some point. I just can't ever remember seeing it. Point three is performance and speed. This is why I got it. Rendering video is super fast. On my 2015 MacBook Pro, which I was previously using, I was having to wait 10, 15 minutes to render a video. Now those same videos, I'm pumping out in like two or three minutes. When making or updating a course, which is several hours of content, I would set up my MacBook Pro to just churn overnight because I didn't want to lose my whole day just waiting for my computer to render. For my latest course, plug plug, if you want to learn cartooning on the iPad, this is the course you need to check out. I would just render the sections when I finished them because I knew it was only going to take a couple minutes. I wasn't going to have to walk away for 20 minutes while I waited for something to export. And I can do less intensive chores on the computer while something is exporting. Checking email, all right, no problem. Replying to comments on YouTube, I can do that. That wasn't the case with the old MacBook. It slowed to a crawl. I can't stress that enough. For video editing, I love this thing. Same thing with previewing video before I actually exported it on my MacBook Pro. Things would get choppy. I couldn't see all the animations. It was hard to get timing just right. Even in Adobe Animate, when I was trying to lip sync, sometimes that would be a little off. I'd export the video. I'd check out the lip sync and it'd be off by like a half a second. It drove me nuts. Not anymore. All of this is to say, this is why I got it. I spend a good chunk of my time doing video editing and for that, this thing is glorious. Is it worth the price? I, I don't know. For me, I've never looked back and I've never regretted it. So why this? Why not a PC or even a lower end iMac? The reason I got this is because it's a Mac. It runs Mac OS. I am paying a premium for Mac OS. I know that, and I know a lot of people hate that. And since most people know me as an illustrator and I do a lot of drawing, if you're thinking about it in that context, yeah, this thing is complete overkill. If you're thinking about getting uh, something like this for illustration, I would definitely not recommend it. Part of the reason I didn't review it earlier is because really as an illustrator, I don't need this. If you're someone who sees with disdain towards Apple, then wait for it. This is going to come as a shocker. The iMac Pro might not be for you. And that is okay. We all have different preferences and this is mine. Okay. But so far, I've talked about all the good things. There's gotta be something here that I don't like. Yeah, there is one big thing that really stands out. The sound. The speakers on this are... Garbage. They're located along the bottom underneath the screen and they point away from where you're sitting and they're tinny and echoey and I edit most of my videos going off sound cues more than visual cues so sound is pretty important to me. Now I have found that if I put my head against the desk and I tilt the iMac up the speakers sound pretty good so maybe calling the speakers themselves garbage isn't accurate. But try sitting like a normal human being something I've been known to do from time to time and they just don't sound good at all. My second gripe about the sound is that plugging in headphones to the audio jack often produces a buzzing sound or the audio gets out of sync and fuzzy. I found a lot of folks online who have had this problem and have posted on forums and I've tried several fixes to no avail to try to get that to work right with my headphones. So at this point, you're probably wondering, what do you do? Well, for me, I always have a mic plugged into my Mac. I'm talking into it now. I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't have pounded on the mic while I was talking. And that microphone has an audio jack along the back. So I just run my headphones through that and it's worked out really well. In fact, I don't always wear headphones. Oftentimes, I'll just turn up the volume on my headphones and use those as external speakers. Yes, you heard me right. My headphones sitting on my desk sound better to me than the speakers that come built into the iMac Pro. It's so weird. I love the look of the iMac line. I really do. I think they're beautiful computers, but this is one situation where it feels to me like they have put form over function in this case. There's plenty of room along the front where they could stick in some front facing speakers, put in a speaker grill, and they would probably sound pretty good. Look what Apple has done with almost no space on the newer iPad Pros. They sound fantastic. Okay. I'm going to stop talking about sound now. I think you guys have a point and I found a workaround, so we're all good. There is one other con and it really is nitpicking, especially after my audio rant, but I kind of wish you could raise and lower the screen. You get one height. You want more, you got to put a riser underneath the iMac or you got to put some books underneath it. There is a VESA mount available, so that's cool. But again, you'll get sticker cuted if you want to do that. Oh, wait, that's not so bad. Oh, God, no, sugar hook. So that is the iMac Pro. If you want to check out something else, I also have a Dell Precision 5720 all-in-one. So if you have any comments or questions or want to see more stuff outside of the realm of pure illustration hardware, let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days. Thanks.